were out on a hike, we decided to take the dogs for some exercise and we also got some harvesting done. Yeah, we were able to pick a few high bush cranberries and we're gonna head on home and give you guys a look at what is in our freezer. And we're also going to be cooking a whole pig head. We ended up buying another pig this year. You may have caught us processing a pig last year around the same time. We did it here on our own property. This time we went to the farmers where he had a mobile butcher come out and butcher the pig. And it was a really great experience for us to see that, a professional, you know, cutting up the pig and doing all that. And we also like buying meat this way because we feel like we know where the pig came from, what it ate, how it was raised, and we get to keep all of the pig. So we have the lard, the organs, feet, all of that good stuff, and clearly the head. Eric's gonna go ahead and show you what is in our freezer. Let's open it up. So like Ariel said before, most of this freezer is actually full of our dog's food and actually all of this dog food we've gotten for free. It was gifted to us by people who no longer needed it. So that's where all of our dog food comes from. I'm gonna pull out this one bucket right here first and this is full of pig scraps and beef scraps. Now that this is out, we can get a better look and I can show you guys what kind of dog food they have. Most of their meat in here is moose meat. We have a five gallon bucket full and then we also have one of these huge black trash bags full of frozen moose meat for them. We have quite a few of these caribou roasts and we've got a few bags of salmon. Here we have a bag of pork scraps and then underneath that we have a container of pork organs. I think we also have some organs from a cow in there. I believe we have some livers in there and I think we have a pig heart. But this may seem like a lot of food for just our two dogs, but our dogs eat a ton of food. They're skinny, they're active, so we go through this actually pretty fast. So that's pretty much it on the dog food section. Let me get that bucket put back in and we're gonna move over to our food. On top, we have a big bag full of kale. And all we did with this kale after we picked it was we washed it and then we blanched it, put it in this bag and stuck it in the freezer. So we kind of just pick off this whenever we need. I'm gonna go over this basket here first. We have quite a few different things in this little basket. We have some dill and some high bush cranberries that we picked. And then as far as some of our frozen veggies, we have some peas, we have Brussels sprouts, and we've got frozen bell peppers. And the cans that you see in here on this side, these are all our pestos. Over here, we have a couple things that are really good. This is roasted eggplant, and that is kind of blended up with some tomatoes and garlic and a few other things. And this is a really good kind of spread. And then we have another of our favorites, and this is our herb butter. And herb butter basically is softened butter mixed with whatever herbs you wanna mix in there. We probably have five or six different herbs in each one of these jars. And then these are just frozen pollen patties for the bees. Let's get this basket set aside and we'll start on our pork. Okay, this lower portion here, we have, you can see a lot of pork trim. We have those three bags plus another up here. And pork trim is what we're gonna be making sausage out of. Underneath that, you can see this big white packaging and that is one of our two hams. And we got our hams whole and raw and we're gonna be curing those ourselves. And then under that we have all of our fat that came from the pig and we're gonna be grinding that fat and rendering it into lard. Down on the way bottom, we have our pork belly, which we're really excited about. We're also gonna be curing that and making our own bacon this year. And then this little section on the side, this is more of the better cuts of meat that we're gonna be eating just as is. We have the pork heart, the hocks, which are one of our favorites and we'll be smoking these when we're ready to eat them. And then we've got a bunch of pork chops and we went with one inch thick pork chops. We've got a couple top sirloins here, and the pig that we got this year was kind of a new breed that we're trying, and it is a Cooney Cooney cross, and you'll notice that this meat actually has a nice layer of fat, so there's a little more fat coming off this pig, which we really like. We've got the pork butt roast. We've got spare ribs, and a few more roasts and ribs down in there, but that's pretty much our pig that we're gonna be eating through this year. Us curing our own meats is gonna save us a lot of money. We didn't have to pay the butcher to do it for us. We're gonna be able to kind of just learn how to do it and we're gonna be able to put exactly what we wanna put on our cures. We've got our smoker fired up and I'm just 
skinning the bark off some of this alder that we're going to be using to smoke the pig head. And all we've done to our head was I scalded it in hot water for about five minutes and then I scraped all the hair off of it and then the hair that kind of didn't want to come off I used a torch and singed it. I got the smoker opened up. We've been smoking this head for about two and a half hours and it's starting to look pretty good. It's actually starting to cook. You can see the gums are starting to kind of pull back and you can see inside his mouth. This smoker has worked really good for us actually this year. The only change we have made to it is I've added a shield. So any of the dripping kind of just falls on this and not the fire and it also disperses the heat a little better. So I think we're gonna smoke this for about an hour longer until we are gonna bring it inside the house. We got the pig head inside. We ended up smoking it for about four hours total. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish it off in the oven, but before we do that, we're gonna make a glaze for this pig, rub it all over it, and we're gonna get it in the oven at 325 degrees for probably around two hours. As you can tell, our pig head is done. We are gonna do a taste test on it. See if it's actually good. And to go with it, we have this awesome loaf of sourdough that Ariel made for us. We thought it'd be fun to give you guys a little bit more info about who we are. And we were also going to be asking each other a question tonight, one that the other does not know. So first we gotta get right into our pig, right? And try it out. Yeah, we've never, I've never cooked a pig head or eaten a pig head. So this is a new one for both of us, but we bought this pig and we're Try not to waste any of it like we do with all of our meat. So I'm gonna start from kind of the back of the head and try to work my way in and see what happens. In the past, we have made bone broth with the pig heads and gifted that to our pups. But there is a lot of really good meat that comes off of a pig head and the cheek, their jowls. The jowls have already been taken off, but you can see there's a lot of meat in that ear. Yeah, the ear be honest, I don't know if I'm going to eat the ear because I couldn't get all the hair off of the canal. So the ear might be for the dogs. I know they like pig's ears. So I'm going to get those cut off first. So the skin is like super crispy. It turned out really good it looks like. And this looks like it's just all fat, but it's that good kind of fat that's kind of just melting. <laughs> that first bite I think was mainly like cartilage and fat so I'm going to try to get in to the cheeks where I know there is some meat. I cut some of the meat out of the cheek which actually looks pretty good. It looks nice and tender. I'm going to try this and see how it is. I'm going to put some of these little scraps we have aside for soup or for baking with beans. A lot of that is fat and skin but it's really tasty and good for flavor. I think we're going to really need to get in there. Yeah that was good. There's a lot of there's a lot of fat. I think we're just not getting into the past the fat into the actual meat yet. So I'm gonna try to cut in the back a little and see what I can get. The fat there's a lot of fat in their necks. Yeah. And it's really dark. Really. The meat, the meat off this pig is coming off very dark. The cooney coons are a redder type pork, so they're not like that light pale. This is just a mix, but it did have redder meat. It's really good. It's not my, it wouldn't be like my prime choice of pork that I would eat, but it's really good. I don't know, it almost tastes like a little like beef to me or something. Yes. Really tender. Really not tender. A, not a ton of flavor, but. That's um, what I feel like lacking too. Yeah, I mean. I there's would, fat in there. Yeah, there's definitely the fat. It's just mild. It's really just plain, is what mm -hmm. I would say. Very good, very good texture, but like a roast beef. Mm hmm Just like roast beef. We did smoke this, so I think that adds a lot of the flavor, but I'm not a meat master by any means, but I would think 
Possibly letting it sit in a marinade or injecting it with some sort of thing would make it have more flavor. I think the fat really does lend a lot of flavor, but there's not much of what we really put on it kind of coming through beyond that skin, for me at least. Yeah, I can taste the smoke when I eat the, you know, the pink part around the edge where the smoke got in there. I just wanted to give credit to Eric for making this beautiful sourdough. This has been hard to master here in Alaska with the different, I don't know if it's different humidity or if it's just our different oven, but we're going to be doing a video on making sourdough and maybe Eric will do it since he did such a good job with this one. Yeah, this one turned out great. We got tons of holes in it. Really nice, nice crust. Yeah, nice hard crust. So coming in a little closer, I'm going to show you kind of some of the meat we're getting off this thing. We're actually getting some really nice looking meat and I'm getting that underneath the jaw. Where their muscles are. Yeah, and it's... Maybe this is going to be the good stuff right here because this is some nice looking pork. We figured this would be a good time to mention our little tidbit about us. And we get a lot of questions about our backstory and just our life before Alaska. So we were going to tell what our previous occupations were or what some of our previous occupations have been. Do you want to go first? Yep, I started working at a young age for my dad. And from there, Me I too. learned to drive a truck. I drove a truck for a few years when we lived in California. I moved to Oregon, or we moved to Oregon, and I drove a garbage truck for about four years, and then we moved up here. Since Eric and I met, I was doing quite a few different side jobs, and I was primarily in school in order to get my degree, which was for dental hygiene. And that's what I previously worked as. That was my occupation. And it was a wonderful one, by the way. So now for the fun part, I'm gonna ask Eric a question that he does not know what it will be. And my question for you is, what has your favorite experience been since we have moved to Alaska? This is on impromptu, so you may need a moment to think about this. Favorite experience was probably during hunting season when we've climbed to this top of this mountain and we could probably see as far as we could I've ever seen. And you're not just seeing far, you're seeing Alaska far, so it's beautiful every way you look. So I guess that would probably be one of my favorite I just have to experiences. See. This is literally my same thing, that same mountain. Well, I was thinking about this question earlier, <laughs> if for some reason you asked me, and I was thinking about when we went hunting, that mountain. Yep, so now it's my turn to ask Ariel a question. When we first met, what was your favorite type of food? And now, today, what is your favorite type of food, and why do you think it's changed so much? <laughs> it's like a multitude of questions. Okay, well, Eric and I had a discussion the other day. Chicken nuggets and chicken alfredo and bacon cheeseburgers were my three favorite foods, <laughs> all equally shared. And it's not that I don't still like that. I mean, I would still happily eat all those meals. But in, in general, my favorite food? I gotta just go, can I just give like a general category? Sure. I'm gonna go with vegetables. I know we're, we're sitting here, we're eating a pig head, and we have some great, gorgeous sourdough bread, but I mean, I just love vegetables. Maybe not carrots, but I like beets, and I like greens, and I, I just love vegetables. They're just so many things, and so much they offer. To me, it's literally like Christmas with picking vegetables. And I feel like it's probably that way because of our lifestyle, just how we've chosen to live, and feeling that closeness, you know, to the plants that we're growing. So that is my answer. Cool. So that's it. Now you guys know a little bit more about each of us. Um, I think all in all, coming to a conclusion with this pig head, I definitely cook another one again. They're really good. Um, we're definitely gonna have to dive in there and work to get that meat. For some reason, it just, it's not like a pork chop. Maybe because we're not able to get the flavor right on the meat. Maybe it's because it's on the skin. It's just not super flavorful. It is tender, which is good, but um, what I'll probably end up doing is getting as much meat off it as we can, and then we'll cook it in like beans Multiple or... Multiple meals. Yeah, like make like same. a corned beef hash or something out of it. So this head should go quite a long ways. Okay, so we are going to eat more of this meal, and we will catch up with you guys next time. Fun. Keep on.